Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video tutorial on using the drag and drop samples kit in the Ultrabeat drum machine in Logic Pro 9. If you haven't already, I highly recommend you watch my video on using step sequencing in the Ultrabeat as it'll help you out immensely in this video. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on uh, our track here. I have a software instrument. Uh, you have to have a software instrument. You can't have an audio instrument, obviously. Uh, and what I'm going to do in this on this is insert the Ultra Beat down in my I/O section. I'm going to go to stereo. And the other thing we have to keep in mind is that uh, we need to save. Uh, it's very important that you save. And even more important is the option that Logic gives you when you try to save this. The copy Ultra Beat samples to project folder option absolutely needs to be checked. If you don't check that off, it's not going to save your samples to your project. So if you try to take your project over to another computer um, and you try to open it up, uh, the computer may not understand what the Ultra Beat is trying to reference. It's, it doesn't understand what samples it's trying to, uh, to pick from. So make sure that's checked uh, before you save. All right, I'm going to go ahead and arm the Ultra Beat because I want to use my MIDI controller. I'm going to double click on Ultra Beat in the I.O. section. It pulls up the, uh, the window for the Ultra Beat. We have our assignment section, the synthesizer section, the velocity gate section, and down in full view is the uh, step sequencer. So the way the drag and drop samples kit works is uh, we go up to the uh, kit selection menu up here under drum kits. And there's one setting that's called drag and drop samples. That's the one we want to grab. It's basically just a blank kit. You notice that there's no names over here anymore. It's just sample 1 through 25. Uh, what the drag and drop samples kit allows us to do is to drag in our own sounds and then sequence those sounds in a drum pattern. So this is really useful. Um, the way this works is you click on one of the samples and we're going to be using this area right here. This is the uh, sample loading area. It's one of three oscillators in the uh, Ultra Beat. We have the first one up here, the second one here, and the third one here. An oscillator in a synthesizer is just a uh, an element in a synthesizer that generates sound, either through uh, using a digital waveform or by dragging in a WAV file or an AIF file or an MP3 file or some other format. The second oscillator is actually just a noise generator, but I still consider it an oscillator. All right, so what we can do, um, so let's say, for instance, I want to put a kick drum on sample one. Sample one here being a C1. All we have to do is click on sample one and then drag and drop a sample into this area, and it should uh, load it. This is a process in sampling that's called mapping. So mapping means that you're assigning particular samples to particular keys across your keyboard. We can also do this by uh, using the little down arrow here and going to load sample. That's the way I'm going to do it. And on my desktop, I have a folder called samples. And in that folder, I have a kick drum. So I'm going to load that in. And you can see that the uh, waveform here, the waveform view, uh, reflects the actual wave file that I loaded in. So if I click on number two here, I'm going to have a blank one, and I can load in another one. I'm actually going to put it on number three, because uh, uh, one, three, five, and six are all white keys on my keyboard. I just want to stay, keep it easy, so I'm going to put it on the white keys. So for sample one, I have a kick drum, and sample three, I'm going to put a snare drum. So I'm going to go to load sample, find the snare drum. Number five is E on the keyboard, so I'm going to load the sample. I have a hi-hat I'm going to put in there. And then 6 is F. I'm going to load in a crash symbol. I can also rename these just by double-clicking on them. So this top one was a crash symbol. Type in crash. 5 was our hi-hat. Fix my typo there. Number three was the snare drum. And number one is our kick drum. So now as long as I have my track armed in the arrange area, I can play C1, D1, E1, and F1 on my MIDI controller and trigger each one of these sounds.
Now, one of the problems you're probably going to immediately encounter is that the um, the length of the the drum doesn't last if I, for instance, if I tap on my crash cymbal very shortly, I only get a little piece of the crash cymbal. I don't get the whole crash cymbal. I'd have to hold it in order to get the full crash cymbal. Um, the reason why this is that way is because the envelope over here is sent very short. Now, the envelope, or an ADSR, ADSR standing for Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release, um, is a very common element in synthesizers and in samplers that allows us to shape the amplitude or the volume of a sample across time. So for each sample, we're actually going to have a different envelope. And the amplitude, you can see AMP here, is by default hardwired to envelope number four. So in order to adjust the envelope of our crash symbol, we click on the crash symbol, come over to our envelope, make sure that we have envelope four selected, and we pull the release all the way out until it won't go anymore. And now when I just tap on the crash symbol, I'm going to hear the whole sample, even though I just barely tapped on it. So regardless of how long you hold the key down, you're going to hear the whole sample from front to end. And that's what's called a one shot. A one shot is a sample that you can press and, and hear the entire sample regardless of how hard you hold the key down. So this is a common practice with drums. I'm going to do it for every single one of my samples here. I'm going to pull the hi-hat out so I hear the whole sample as well as the snare drum and for the kick drum. Again, very common for percussion instruments. And now when I press the keys, I'll hear the all four samples. I'll hear all uh, the entire sample. Much more natural sounding. So now what we can do is just like we did in the last video, we can go into our step sequencer and we can build a sequence. So I'm just going to build a sequence out of what I have here. And one of the cool things about Ultrabeat is you can turn the sequencer on and press play. And you can build the sequence while this is playing and looping itself. So one thing I did there is I right clicked and you can choose add every downbeat or add every upbeat. Very helpful uh, if you're trying to create eighth notes and you don't want to click on each eighth note uh, to make it work. Other thing we can do is uh, I think my kick drum's a little loud, my crash cymbal is a little, cymbal is a little loud, hi-hat's a little loud. I can pull the volume down there. We can also pan these out. We can pull these to the right, pull them to the left, give it a little bit of, a, of space. Uh, we can mute them, we can solo them individually, uh, and the SQ just means that that particular sample is actually being used. It's being uh, used in the sequence over here. I'm also going to come down to my gate and velocity area on my hi-hat, just to make my hi-hat a little more natural. Generally, when uh, real drummer, acoustic drummers play, they tend to accent the downbeats, and they tend to not accent the off beats, so I'm going to pull the volume down on any note that is not on a downbeat so that this has a little more uh, natural character to it. Let's see what we have here now. Not bad. If I want to use this in my song, all I have to do is come down to the bottom uh, left corner here to my pattern button where it says drag to arrange window. And I just drag that down to my range area. And you got to make sure you turn the sequencer off, close the window, and now I can hear this pattern down in my range area. And there we go. That's using the drag and drop samples kit in the Ultra Beat. Uh, if you have any questions um, or comments for me, please leave them down in the comments section below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.